Hi, my name is Ajay Nair. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Horticulture at Iowa State University. And today I wanted to uh, show you a few options of summer cover crops that can be integrated into vegetable production systems. So before a fall vegetable crop, uh, we are standing uh, in a cover crop plot. Uh, this study was funded by the Leopold Center for Sustainable Ag. Uh, same idea of, of looking into options of cover crops that can be used for, uh, by vegetable growers. So this cover crop which I'm standing here is cow pea. Uh, this is the legume and uh, as you can see, you know, this has grown pretty well out here. Uh, uh, since it's a legume, it fixes nitrogen uh, anywhere from 50 to 100 pounds per acre. Uh, the seeding rate for this cover crop, cow pea, is uh, uh, anywhere from 80 to 90 pounds per acre. We seeded it at a rate of 85 pounds per acre. And the fun thing of planting uh, legume is uh, nitrogen fixation and that nitrogen fixation happens when the legume forms a symbiotic relationship with the rhizobium the bacterium in the soil and as a result of it you see nodules on the root system and if you come close to me if you look at uh, this root system here it's all full with nodules you see this small bumpy little small round structures i'll remove the soil so you can get a better idea now you can see the nodules. So these nodules are uh, indication that this legume plant, this cowpea plant has been fixing nitrogen. Now just having the nodules doesn't uh, mean that there is nitrogen being fixed. These nodules, when you burst them open, they should be reddish in color or pinkish in color. And that's because of a compound called leg hemoglobin in them. So I'm going to just uh, take one or two nodules and just maybe try to burst them and let's see and there you go you use let me open the nodule for you see this red coloration here so see the red coloration so these nodules were you know pretty actively fixing nitrogen which is a which is a good good thing for vegetable growers especially in the fall when they go to plant in this project we are going to plant cauliflower after we terminate uh, by the way today's date is uh, 12th of august 2014 uh, these cover crops were seeded on 25th of june so we are looking at about month and a half about six to seven weeks and this is the growth we got in about seven weeks so tomorrow we'll be coming and we'll be tilling this cover crop in so legume cover crop cowpea excellent source of nitrogen excellent weed suppression too because in here if you try to come and look inside here there, there are few weeds but not a lot of weeds later i'll show you a control plot too but good weed suppression behind me is another cover crop uh, a lot of growers are familiar with this cover crop this is buckwheat and uh, we have an excellent stand here we finished our biomass sampling today of the, of the cover crop all seeded at the same time with the cowpea and again some of the advantages of uh, buckwheat as the cover crop is uh, would be you know uh, weed suppression and you could come in here and take a look there are absolutely no weeds in there there are few but excellent weed control uh, uh, with buckwheat buckwheat also since it has these white flowers it attracts beneficials and pollinators and bees in here uh, so a natural habitat for them uh, uh, to uh, to forge on, on the uh, on the on the pollens. Uh, weed suppression is excellent. Uh, uh, less leaching uh, or or the erosion of soil. Uh, it adds organic matter. Both cowpea, buckwheat, all do a great job in adding biomass to the soil. Buckwheat, we are looking at three to four tons per acre. Uh, cowpea, maybe a little more more than that. Maybe five tons per acre of biomass. So that's excellent organic matter that go that goes into the soil. While we are talking, we can look take a look at another cover crop. Uh, which is out here. Uh, this is uh, sorghum Sudan grass. This is from the grass family. Uh, excellent sort of source of biomass. So if the uh, primary objective is to add organic matter, uh, uh, sorghum Sudan grass is, is the cover crop to go. Can produce anywhere from eight to ten thousand pounds per acre of biomass. So that's a lot of biomass. Uh, in some cases, it can even go to fifteen thousand pounds, uh, which is about seven to eight uh, tons uh, per acre. Uh, Sorghum Sudan is this and it's, I'm going to pull some of the root system, see how the root system is holding on to the soil. So the, the good top soil which you have does
doesn't go away in the in in the uh, in the drain or, or just or just washes away. This cover crop roots pull that soil and keep it in place. Uh, again, uh, uh, this is a grass cover crop, so a little bit higher carbon to nitrogen ratio as compared to cowpea or buckwheat. So after you terminate this cover crop, you might have to wait for a week or two for this for this those stalks and the leaves and all to disintegrate uh, nicely and mix in the soil. Uh, and, and I would like to show you the, uh, the control plot as well. So we had cowpea, we looked at buckwheat. Uh, buckwheat was seeded at uh, about 50 pounds per acre. Sorghum Sudan grass seeded at 50 pounds per acre. But, uh, cowpea, as I mentioned earlier, uh, about 85 pounds per acre. And this is the control plot here. And if you do nothing in the summer for about a month and a half, this is what will happen. Uh, you have to either till or apply herbicides to manage weeds. But if you have a cover crop, you don't have to apply herbicide, you don't have to till or, or cultivate. Uh, and at the same time, if it's a legume, nitrogen fixation and plus organic matter. So you see a lot of red root pigweed, we have a lot of purslane, we have quack grass in there, uh, we have witch grass in there. So uh, a lot of weeds and, and these weeds are you know, uh, setting seed, so not good at all. The final cover crop which we are studying, summer cover crop study here, is, is uh, sun hemp. And we are in the sun hemp plot right now. This is Cisbania rostrata. Sun hemp uh, does pretty well uh, in the southern uh, regions, especially in Florida, Georgia. And we are trying to see how it will perform here uh, in Iowa when seeded end of June, 25th June. Uh, we, do, we don't see a lot of biomass here. This was seeded at about 45 pounds per acre. So not a lot of biomass, uh, it, it, it's growing okay but it's not able to suppress weeds as good as cowpea or buckwheat or sorghum sudan grass but again it's a legume so it will fix some nitrogen and uh, it's a newer cover crop for our region here in Iowa so we thought we'd better give it a shot. I would say we should increase the seeding rate, uh, this was seeded at 50 pounds per acre, maybe looking at 75 pounds per acre might be a better idea because see how sparse seed is growing. And you can see a lot of uh, weeds uh, putting their heads up. Red root pigweed is everywhere. It's getting ready to seed as well. So for weed management, I might not go with uh, sun hemp. Uh, I will if I increase the seeding rate. So I believe I gave you a good uh, idea of some of the cover crops we are studying here at the Horticulture Research Station. And the whole and the uh, the purpose of this project was to look at weed suppression. And after that. Uh, after the cover crops are terminated, we will be planting cauliflower and we'll be collecting data on yield and, and other attributes uh, of the crop. So hopefully, uh, 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 consi considering uh, or integrating a cover crop uh, would be a wise judgment by any grower uh, to enhance and improve the productivity of the cropping system and make their production systems more sustainable. Uh, thank you for watching this video and again my name is Ajay Nair. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Horticulture, Iowa State. You can also reach me uh, or, or uh, uh, learn more about our projects on our website. Our lab webpage, it's a pretty long one. Uh, it's www.extension.iastate.edu slash vegetable lab. I'll repeat, uh, www.extension.iastate.edu slash vegetable lab. Thank you very much and uh, happy cover cropping.